Okay, so Pi News episode 21, and uh, Raspberry Pi Imager has just had an update, and it's quite a decent update as well. I'll just zoom into the Windows computer just to show you one of the differences that's only on the Windows version. So if you don't really know about Raspberry Pi Imager, as I was demonstrating just now, it runs on Mac OS, it runs on Windows, it runs on Raspberry Pi, and you can also run it on an x86 Linux computer as well. And it's a great way of writing operating system images to an SD card, a USB stick, an SSD drive, whatever your choice of storage is. Uh, and it also automatically downloads compatible versions for your Raspberry Pi. So Raspberry Pi OS, uh, if we go into general operating systems, we've got Ubuntu, we've got Manjaro, uh, there's also gaming systems on here. It is a brilliant tool, but it's also helped me loads of times when I've had an SD card or a USB stick that I couldn't get to recognize by an operating system and it actually formats whatever your storage type is as FAT32. Now you might not want it to be FAT32 but you can fix it by formatting it then put it into your device of choice everything recognizes it and you can format it and start using it but it's fixed many a memory card or USB stick for me it's a great feature. Uh, use custom you can also install operating systems that you've downloaded that aren't available through this tool uh, you can install operating systems with that as well but the bit that's new is uh, control shift and x which is advanced options now these would be particularly useful for people who have to write a lot of pi images uh, especially something like schools and colleges where they want to be able to put in the network password uh, because one of the things so this is the unique thing to windows so if we, when we're writing an operating system, if we click on configure Wi-Fi, it will automatically put in the SSID of your network, but also the password. But only Windows does this, so Mac and Linux don't write the password. Uh, there obviously must be some security issue with why it can't do it on those systems. But uh, yeah, the Windows one just passes it on. If you're writing Raspberry Pi OS to an SD card for multiple Pis, you can disable the overscan, so let's get rid of the black border uh, on boot. Uh, you can enable SSH. Now I've been playing around with this and, and it hasn't worked for me. Uh, I've been trying to control it uh, with my iPad, which I've done in separate videos, but I wanted to make it that you could automatically set it up to do it, but I'll do that in a separate video. We've got use password authentication for SSH and allow public key authentication only. We can check that the password is correct. You can also set the, the uh, location settings as well. Uh, so you can see here, weirdly the Windows one's defaulted to America, my Pi defaulted to the UK and GB for keyboard layout. Uh, and also you can skip first run wizard, so you can get it that it you just turn it on and it's up and running, it's connected to the Wi-Fi. So it does make that whole process uh, very, very quick and some people are gonna absolutely love this. So that's Raspberry Pi Imager and that's version 1.6, a great tool. So next up is a YouTube channel, Top Mankalanx uh, is a channel that uh, does a lot with Raspberry Pi and 3D printing. And you can see here, this is the same board I used the other day, this GeekPi board, uh, which gives you full size HDMI. But it's, uh, it's a bit of a project uh, using 3D printing, building a case, and uh, it goes into great detail. I haven't watched all of it yet, but I am going to watch it after I do this video. Uh, there's loads and loads of great detail in how this is built, how it's put together, uh, and the various processes. But it's definitely worth having a look at. And if we have a look at the channel, uh, there's other builds and things on there, uh, mostly to do with 3D printing and, and Raspberry Pi. So, yeah, worth checking out, and I'll put a link in the description for that. Next up, this was just an amazing one. Uh, so this is uh, my first Raspi project. I got tired of walking out to the garage to just find out the mail didn't come yet. So I built this to email me with a photo. You can see the Raspberry Pi here. There's a camera. It obviously senses when the mail comes in and, uh, and emails a photo. Just, just brilliant. Really, really love that sort of thing. It's, uh, it's something very different. Next one up was another bit of 3D printing and it's a 14 inch laptop but converted to a monitor. Lots of people are doing this, converting uh, old uh, laptop displays to make them into a monitor. And you can see this is vertically mounted. Uh, and if we have a look, has this got more photos? I think there is. Yeah, so you can see it here uh, in the middle of the screen. So it's giving a sort of informational display. Um, but yeah, I just thought it was uh, it was a nice different different way of doing things. And is there another photo there as well? Yeah, you can see the back. Uh, so they put uh, visa mounts on there so it can be uh, mounted on the bracket. And you can see using one of these boards, 
uh, to convert it with DVI and VGA and HDMI and analog jacks, all sorts of things in there. Quite a substantial arm for it. And the last one, and this is a great one. Uh, so Jose, the creator of PyKiss, has uh, bought out GTA 3 on Raspberry Pi. Now this works on Raspberry Pi OS. So I commented on the video, great work, uh, and my emojis didn't show up. Uh, all credits go to the PyKiss fan, Foxhound311, for creating this. Uh, so basically with PyKiss, you can install this, but you do need the original game files to be able to get it up and running. But it's very, very straightforward after that. So I'm going to switch operating systems now, because uh, this is running on Twister Lite, and I've actually installed it into Raspberry Pi OS, so I'll show you how that is. So I'm in Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit, and uh, if I go into my games folder, you can see that I've already installed it. Jose has got the instructions on how to install it on his channel. Um, but uh, the location of the files is home, pi, and games. So if I scroll down, you can see the games folder. Uh, PyKiss created this GTA folder, so you open it, and you've got to put all these files, which are all the uh, original PC files, uh, into this folder. But I had a bit of a game getting hold of the files, and I can't tell you where to get the files, and uh, nor can Jose. Uh, you have to look for that yourself. But the ones I downloaded uh, were like an ISO file, like a, like a CD. Uh, so I'm going to switch computers and show you what I did. Any excuse to get out my 1999 Compaq Armada laptop. So let's switch it on. I went with XP as it was nearer to the date of GTA 3. So this was the file that I downloaded uh, and unzipped it. And you can see here, it's just got main with a picture of a CD. If you double click it, it will automatically install GTA onto this computer. So I did that, I followed it through and, uh, and installed it in the normal way. Uh, and then if I go to my computer uh, and the E drive, which is where I installed it to, there's a folder in program files uh, called GTA 3. And basically, these are all the files that you need. Uh, and when you copy it over, so I copied it over to a USB stick, uh, and then I copied it over to the Pi in that folder. Uh, but it wanted to rewrite the .ini file, which I think was this file. I didn't let it overwrite it, and everything works fine for me. But I did it before I even started, so I haven't even tried to play GTA 3 on this computer. Uh, I figured it would be better to leave it just as... Uh, installed files without anything done to it and it works so let's go back over to the Pi let's just shut that one down and so here we are back on Raspberry Pi OS so start games GTA 3 I haven't done any configuration of this at all and I was playing the game and I hadn't realized that the screen capture had cut out uh, because I was enjoying it so much but uh, you can see here that it, it just it runs so well it's really smooth uh, as I say I haven't tried to change any of the settings or anything like that but uh, it's it's just as well it's, in fact it's better than I remember it because I used to play this on laptops when they came out and uh, at the time most of the laptops were worse performance than this by quite a margin Ooh. but it's perfectly playable, looks great, all the effects and everything seem to be working really well. All the sound is great. Wait here, man, while I go in and talk to Luigi. I'm a working girl. So great work, Jose. Great work, Foxhound311. I'm super pleased with this. Okay, so thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Oh.